think I want to be preaching there. I'm sure that we have all those younger pastors and pastors are coming up that need to express the fire of the Holy Spirit. You know, when young people preach, it's always very powerful because they can jump from here, jump there, you know. They can bring a lion on the stage. You know, when I was a younger pastor, you know, I preached one time, I bought a coffin on the stage. I didn't know, I, you know, I thought that was a good idea. Until, until someone told me, someone showed me the picture many years after and said, that, Pastor, do you know that someone can say you're a ritualist? I said, wow. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, so let's finish. Let's, let's start. Can we turn our Bibles to Matthew chapter 5 as we continue our teaching, hedging against spiritual attack? And so let, let, me, let me add something to one of my announcements. Someone says, okay, you've said all of these things. What do I have to do as a member? I think the beginning, what you have to do is to find a place you connect to. That's what you have to do. Because listen to me, everybody. And all of you that invite, all, all of you in this place are the most serious people in church. That's why you come on a Wednesday. If you don't find a place you connect to, over time you'll drop off. The reason why is this. The church services meet a specific need of yours. But their human needs have multidimensional needs. There is also a type of need that needs to be met relationally. And God designed us to be relational. So every time you don't have relationship, you just find yourself dropping off. God designed every single person to be relational and designed our needs to be met what? Relationally. That's why give, it shall be given unto you. See, how do you, so you yourself, you have to give to somebody else and it shall be given unto you. What happens? Good measure, press down, shake that shall angels know, shall men give to your bosom. So he says, I will bless you, but it's going to be through the connection of men. I'm going to bless you through the connection of men. And the truth is this, if you want to grow, See, let me say this finally. If you want to grow spiritually, huh, I used to think that it was a sermon that will help you grow. Sermon will help you. But you know what? I've been born again now maybe 30 something years. I can't remember the best sermon that made me grow. But guess what I remember? The person that made me grow. If I talk to you, I can remember I will mention some guy the first, person, the first person that took me to church to get born again, my aunt, Dr. Yinka Elemide, you know, my aunt, she's a wonderful aunt of mine. The person that helped me to do, know how to do quiet time, Oye Bade Dosumo, that's been helping you quiet time. And, you know, um, um, Femi Afrika and his wife can tell you, you know, and the, the person that taught me how to pray, Peter Otoki taught me how to pray. Then, you know, the person that taught me about the Holy Spirit, Lake of Fashion, taught me about the Holy Spirit. And these people, all over the place just taught me like that. They just taught me after one another, one after the other. And, you know, that changed my life. I'm only saying to you that, because many of you say that, Pastor, I'm stagnated spiritually. I need something powerful as a message. You need to be in a relationship. You want to pray? Find people that can pray. You want to read the Bible? Find people that read the Bible. Because how, how many of you smoked before? No, not those of you that are currently smoking. If you're currently smoking, put down your hands. That's fine. <laughs> Praise the Lord. No, not those that are lying. Those are honest. How many of you smoked before? Oh, didn't you smoke one time? <laughs> you did. Come on, raise up your hands. We spoke about it one time. Raise up your hand. Exactly. Raise up your hand. You smoked before. Raise up your hand. Raise up your hand. In Jesus' name, stop lying. In Jesus' name, stop lying. <laughs> Even the girls that smoke, stop lying. In Jesus' name, raise up your hand. You smoked before. Exactly. Now, uh, no, keep your hand. I want to ask another question. Just keep your hands up. Now, all of you that smoked before, how many of you that are raising up your hands, it was the influence of friends that got you to smoke? Almost everybody is raising up their hands. Almost everybody that raised up their hand is still keeping what? He's keeping their hand. So, if friends can help you build the wrong habit, does it not occur to you that friends can help you build the right habits? That's the thing. If, if friends help you to bring the wrong habit, Friends can help you bring the right habits. Glory to God. In fact, some of you that had sex when you were young, it was really a friend of yours that challenged you. I said, ah, you're, you're a small boy. Go, go, go and fire that girl. The way you're laughing, I know you did it. <laughs> so I'm saying to you that, so I'm just saying to you that, so the way we're going to do this is that 
everybody's going to plug in in one way or the other and we're just going to so we're going to have a lot of conversations about that and just be able to go forward because everybody has everybody needs to grow and we'll grow what so listen we grow what relation so let's say we grow relationally exactly we grow so don't just be content by church we grow relationally after i'm going to start work i'm going to do an experiment on wednesday i'm going to do something personal myself and that guy that owns a restaurant we're going to put food out because we just want you guys to spend about maybe 10 or 15 minutes after every service to eat and when people eat they stay the food will be done in such a way that i can't take it away it'll be something that you have to eat right there because we just want to talk to one another and all of the single people want to get married so wants to just talk to one another you know do, do you follow me on social media do you know what i do every saturday night now every saturday i just pick a single guy in our church that's been really single and i put him on social media the next person is joshua you know that joshua over there joshua is really really single all the money he makes i don't know how he spends it so this saturday i'm going to post him on social media and be like this guy is single this is his job if you think you're interested just send me a message praise the lord i'm doing the work of jesus praise god and it's been working. One of the people I did for last week, a lady contacted me from London and said that if you want me to buy a ticket for him to come, I'm open to meet up with him. People are like sending me very honest messages. And I'm like, this is wonderful. So if you're really single, how many of you are single guys here? And you love some adverts. You love some adverts. You love some adverts, right? You have to see me after the service. God bless you. you I love this guy. Very, come, come, come. This guy, I love him. Tell me about yourself. Let's just do the advert right now. My name is Gibson Samuel. Gibson Samuel, fantastic. How long have you been in church? Uh, three years. Three years in church. You know, what, what, what do you do? My job? Yeah, what do you do? Yeah. Yeah, I work with a uh, finance company. You work with a finance company. And um, you're a Christian, right? And you're hoping to date someone. Yes, huh? yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so, uh, you know, so, you know. So, you need to give me your deep. So, if you're interested, just send me like a message. And I would be able to pass on your message. <laughs> You know, Gibson, tonight is your night. God has answered your prayers. God has answered your prayers. <laughs> stuff that only I can do. Praise God. Pastor just need to do kind of stuff. Praise the Lord. That's why I love him. So Gibson. <laughs> All the just said, ladies, just say Gibson. <laughs> uh, you see the guy I told you? You see? You see? It started. <laughs> Brother, you are settled. Praise God. You are so settled. <laughs> Did you have any Gibson Gibson? <laughs> Gibson. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 5. <laughs> hey, I missed our church. Praise God. Mm. You should thank God for me. I almost died three weeks ago. Sincerely. I'm, I'm serious. One guy knocked me down on the road in the U.S. I was jogging, and the guy was not looking, and he just came, boom. But I was able to grab this car, so instead of falling off, I grabbed the car, and I landed on my back foot, and for like two weeks, my foot was just there, you know. And I told him to go, and that annoyed my wife, because my wife was like, this is how we make money. <laughs> this is what the Bible means. When it says, give, and it shall be given unto you. <laughs> it says, you just lie on the floor, you call 911, but I was just thinking about it. If I lie on the floor, I call 911, it appears on papers, Nigerian pastor, knocked down in the US. Everybody in the is going to panic. They're like, oh my God, what happened to our pastor? Where is the Holy Spirit? <laughs> so, so I went to the hospital. I, was, I began to cheat myself. I'm like, we're spending money that we should not be spending. This guy's supposed to pay for the medication. You even lie down there and you make an extra $10,000 because you're going to pay for everything, you know. Praise the Lord. And so I, that's when I know that some people pray that cash should knock them down abroad. <laughs> Mark chapter 5. Or should we start from Genesis chapter 28? So this evening, I mean, this is an exhortation. It's not a sermon. So I'm going to wrap up because we want to watch the football match afterwards. We want to watch the football match afterwards, you know. Yeah. So you don't have to. You don't have to. We'll close the service and we'll watch it. If you don't want, you don't want to watch it. See, let me say something about church. Church, I want, I want it to be in our consciousness. Church is a place for connection. Listen, you can stay at home and watch online. But why did God say come, come together? Because there are some things that should happen. There are some connections that should happen when you come together. So we, we need to design our church. And, and when you come to church, you see me outside there, 
You know, some of you say, I say hi, you're like, oh, why pastor saying hi to me? I'm just saying hi to you. You're not demon possessed yet. I don't know about tomorrow, but at least for now. So, connection. So, we should just be able to connect. So, Mark, um, so Genesis chapter 25. Genesis 28, sorry. And we'll now come back to Mark 5, 28. Genesis 28. Verse 16. I mean, you can read um, maybe, verse t maybe verse 12. The Bible refers to Jacob and it said, And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the top, and the top of it reached to the heavens, and behold, the angel of God ascending and descending on it. So this was the dream that Jacob had. So at this point, Jacob had stolen the blessing from Esau, so Jacob had a dream. So the Bible says in, um, in verse 13, And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the God of Abraham thy father, and the God of Isaac, the land where thou liest, the word thou liest, to thee I will give thee unto thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread above to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all thy places which thou goest, and will bring thee again unto this land. For, uh, listen, this is the power of prophetic words. You know what the power of prophetic words is? When God gives you a word, no matter how it goes left, right, and center, a prophetic word is meant to hold you as an anchor. So, what is 2019 for us? Who remembers? It's our year of what? So, this year we are focused and we are what? Unstoppable. That means this year we are going to reach places we have not been to. No wonder as a church our vision is going on, on, a, on a scale of amplification. Because this year we have, and it's not just us, but even for you as a business person, eh? this year I'm unstoppable. That means that unstoppable does not say there are no barriers. It says in, in, despite the barriers, despite the obstacles, I'm crushing it. Hallelujah. I'm crushing it. And, and I'm so glad that we're going to enter into a season of prayer, 21 days of fast time. I'm so glad that research starts next month. You, 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 you know why I'm so glad? Because by this time of the year, people start retiring mentally. And the, the sort of our goals, when, the, when in your mind, if you have given up on your goals, no matter what you do physically, you cannot reach it. And instead of us to be retreating, we are going to be refiring. As a matter of fact, we are going to pursue God, his will, his purpose, our goals with greater passion than we did in January. Because we believe that the best is yet to come. Listen to me. The best of this year is not in June. The best of this year is not in the first half. The best of this year is in the remaining month of this year. Someone say, how do you know this? The Bible says, better is the end of a thing than the beginning. I don't know how much you have lost. I don't know how much you have made. I don't know what has gone wrong. But the best days are yet ahead of you. This is a place to stand up and lift up your hands and give him some mighty praise of hallelujah. Glory to God. This is the power of prophecy. Because if you read the story of Jacob, Jacob went through a lot of things. But at some point, Jacob told his wife, he said, the God of my fathers has spoken to me to go back. You know the reason why? Jacob says, I know that I will not die here because there's a word on my life. question and i'm hoping that during why during 21 days of fasting because during the 21 days of prayer we're going to have like six special midweek services like fire 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 services yeah just i'm just doing your mind fire fire services things you've never seen in your life before is going to happen and one of the things when i traveled that god taught me was this that the value you place on prophecy determine a prophecy will happen to you or not my god you know what that means the fact that god gives you a prophecy is not automatic 
that the prophecy will happen to you. Someone say, that is ridiculous. Think of the children of Israel. When God brought them out of Egypt, the prophetic word was this. I'm taking you to a man that flows with what? Milk and honey. How many people reached there? Two. Caleb and what? Joshua. One million people plus died. Why? Although they had a prophecy on their life, they were not able to walk into prophecy. They were not able to walk into prophecy. So I'm saying to you that although there's a prophecy in your life, it's not automatic. God can give you a word concerning your business. You'll be the biggest. He can give you a word about your restaurant. It will, it will multiply. He can give you a word about this. But if you sit down and do nothing, the first thing, so says, what should I do? The first thing you have to, be, to do is to be conscious. You have to be conscious. You have to look at life from the lens of prophecy. You have to look at the future from the lens of prophecy. You let, your, you let to plan and let your plans align with the prophecy that God has given you. Just to remind you, my God, there's something, there's something that God has shown you about your marriage, about your job, about your business. Hey, can you begin to become more conscious of it? Do you know the, you know that there was a time that Paul was under attack, he was going to die? And everybody would say, hey, 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 and Paul says, I believe it shall be, even as it was told me. Paul says, things don't look like it ought to be. But I, the, the reason I am not moved is because I believe it shall be, even as it was told me. And let me tell you something, people. If there's a year you're going to work more, it's this year. Because expansion means more work. The, the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. And, and this is it. God was right there beside him. And he was not conscious that God was there. And this is where I'm going to because this evening and throughout the month, we're talking about prayers. What he was saying is this. He said, God is here right now. And I wasn't aware. Do you know what it means not to be aware that you are in a divine moment? Do you know what it is that you are in a spiritual transaction and you are not aware you are at that time? Do you know how many people have lost supernatural opportunities because they were not aware that God was just in a place at that time? Do you know? A good example is Samuel. God reached out to Samuel three times. See, as, as soon as God reached out to Samuel, Samuel ran to Eli. You know why? Because when you're not trained in spiritual things, when God manifests to you, you will say it's coincidences. You will say, my mind told me. Meanwhile, God is speaking wisdom to you about a situation. Meanwhile, God is speaking power to you to prevent you from future trouble. Meanwhile, God is giving you victories in warfare, but you are not aware. Glory to God. Why do we pray? Because prayer activates spiritual sensitivity. That's why we pray. Why sensitivity important? It takes sensitivity to, be a, to take advantage of divine moments. Oh yeah. Let me tell you something. Do you notice one time in the Bible, this is Mark chapter 5 story. I can't go in there. The Bible says a woman with an issue of blood touched Jesus Christ. She touched Jesus. And when she touched Jesus Christ, just Christ turned back and said, which touched me? And his disciples said, Master, when you're not crazy, everybody is touching you. Why are you asking who touched me? Jesus was so sensitive, not because he felt a diminishedness in his power ability. No, he was so sensitive that in the midst of the fun fair, in the midst of the shaking, the hugging, because I can imagine that people were pecking him and kissing him and touching his head and jumping on him. In the midst of all that play, it's, it's like someone eating in the restaurant or by the beach. In the midst of that, he was able to sense that there was a spiritual transaction that had taken place. It was, just imagine at the beach, you are rolling the waters in the swimming pool and there are naked guys and naked girls and it's just like everybody having fun. But in the midst of it, you're like, my God, oh my God, who we'll stepped into this pool and would you power? He was so sensitive. Listen to me. And because he was so sensitive, he was able to recognize what God has done. When you are not sensitive, you will not be able to recognize the doing of the Lord. You will not know that you are meant to start this business because you are not sensitive. 
You will not know you are meant to avoid this marriage because you're not sensitive. You will not know that this relationship is a waste of time because you're not sensitive. But one of the things that prayer does is this, because when you pray, your spirit comes alive. Prayer is like, is like an antenna. When you, when you pray, you're, you set your antenna and it begins to pick up signals. Some of you here, on your phone, you can access Netflix. Netflix is playing right now, but it's not showing on your phone because you have not turned Netflix on. When we pray, we turn on our spirit. When we turn on our spirit, it begins to pick vibrations. It begins to pick signals. It begins to pick points from everywhere. You say, what's happening? Because our spirit is turned on. Someone says, why is God not speaking to me, honey? God is always speaking, but your spirit is not picking up signals. God is always speaking. So one of the amazing things that prayer does for us is this. We just become very spiritually aware. <sighs> this wine press will be different. Let me tell you, this wine press, many of you, 20 years time, you will settle it. Sorry, this research rather. This 21 is a prayer. 20 years time, you will settle it. Many of you, where you have made mistakes that let you be stranded, God will show you. You will just say, oh wow, that was where I missed it. Some of you, it's a t and you know the thing about spiritual sensitivity? When you're not spiritually sensitive, when you're not spiritually sensitive, you become easy to win in battles. The Bible says that when men slept, the enemy came and what? So terse. When men slept, when they were not spiritually conscious, and many of you are here, you are already under the influence of Satan. Should I tell you the truth? The people that are under satanic sabotage are the least aware that they are under one. How should I prove it to you? When you watch African magic, where are all the demons in graveyard? Yes or no? Talk to me now. Yes or no? Let me tell you the truth. According to the Bible, no demon is in graveyard. Why? The Bible says when a demon is outside of your body, he's going through and fro, looking for a place of rest. Rest means looking for a person to express himself through. If the demon is that intelligent, why would he go to a graveyard? Demons are not in graveyard. Because when they are in a box, what can they do? Nothing. Where are they? Hassle Rock and White House. So how do you know? Because the more influential the men are, the more they can have expressions. But most of us are afraid of graveyards here. You know why? Because we've been told that demons are in graveyard. And that's when you see people that are under spiritual sabotage. They are not even aware that something is going wrong. They are oblivious to the spiritual th thing around them. Why must, you spiritual sense, why must you be spiritually sensitive? You can discern when there's an attack of the enemy. You can even discern when a word spoken over your life is a word from God. Because sometimes prophets make mistakes. Pastors make mistakes. There are some people that are false prophets. But when a word is spoken over, you can discern and say, this is a word from God. And let me say something to you. This year, research is different. You know why it's different? For the first time this year's research, we are taking our children on our 21 days of prayer. So all of you are going to get a booklet for the adult 21 days of prayer. The children also are going to get what? A booklet. Someone says why? Because we want you to train your child on how to hear God. Many children know about sex at 7, at 8. Many children can use the effort at 5. Why shouldn't your children be hearing the voice of God and speaking in tongues at 7 years old? One of the beautiful things was when I traveled, I mean, I spent some good time with my family and when I spent time with them, we'll, we'll, I will sit down in the morning and we'll have quiet time, like all this course. Sometimes it's very difficult to do when there's school. And when I discussed with them, I, I was talking about, I was sharing about the voice of God on that level. So I asked my, I, and I asked them, I said, so which of you has heard God recently? And my, my firstborn said, oh, I heard God this time. He said, and my last child said, oh, I heard God last week, Monday. I said, what did God tell you? He said, God said that um, we're going to go somewhere. God said the trip will be safe and will be okay. That God gave him that assurance. And this is a five-year-old boy saying this. So I said, can a five-year-old boy hear God? Do you remember that Samuel was a child in the temple? He was not a big man. The Bible says he was a child. They brought him as a child that was weaned. When the child is weaned, it's just about one year old. And you have kids. I can't hear the voice of God. You know why? Because we develop our kids to be smart 
We don't develop them to be spiritual. We develop them to come to church. We don't develop them to know God. So kids see Christianity as a religion, not as a participation of divine life in a human experience. When your child begins to know that, nobody can convince him otherwise because he has tasted, he has seen, he has known this is the work of God. I met a couple that shared a huge story with me and they said this. They said, oh, you know what? He said, when my child was pregnant for a second child, he said, we didn't even know I was pregnant. Maybe she was about five weeks pregnant, but they didn't know. He said, my child just got up and said, mom, the Lord spoke to me that you are pregnant and it's going to be a girl you're going to have. This is a, this is a five-year-old child. He said, you're pregnant, you're going to have a girl. And I was like, you know, they, they want to encourage the child. So they said, amen. And guess what happened? By the time the baby got bigger, they went to the hospital. By the time they went to the hospital. But the time she said she was pregnant, she was pregnant. So one day, they checked the sex of the baby. The baby said, oh, it's a girl. And the dad now came out and said, oh, Johnny, did he hear the doctor? It's a girl. You were right. <laughs> and the child looked at dad. He said, dad, I thought the word of God was superior to the doctors. I told you what God said already. Strange. Praise the Lord. So one of the things, one of the things prayer does, and this is why you need to pray. Prayer builds what? Sensitivity. You just know that this is a bad friend. You know this is a bad influence. You know this is a bad decision. You know this and this. You just know. You just know. How do you know? Because you are so, because do you know that when your nose is blocked, if someone fat, you will not smell it? It's not because the fat isn't stinking. Your nose is blocked. Some of you, your spiritual senses are blocked. And you need like spiritual antibiotics to clear you out. So this is not prayers, it's for what? To clear you out spiritually so that you can begin to make decision. When someone's known it's bad, they will eat bad food. They will not know the food is bad until they put it in their mouth because their nose is bad. And some of you are eating bad food, not because you're a bad person, but your spiritual senses are dead. That's why you did that girl. I found out, that, oh, there's something wrong. That's why you did that guy because your spiritual senses are paralyzed. But prayer brings an awareness. In prayer, I'm spiritually aware. I'm aware. I'm aware. I'm aware. Hey, how do I become aware? So, how does Paul suppose that when I pray, my spirit, I, through prayer, I turn in my spirit. Let's stand up on our feet and develop some awareness in our spirits. We just have about three minutes to pray. Will you mind lifting up your hands towards heaven? And let's pray together. And as you pray tonight, trust that your spiritual senses will be stirred up. Can I someone be on the drums, please? Can we just have some music right there? Let's go ahead and pray. If you can pray in the spirit, lift up your voice and let's go ahead and pray. Everywhere you're standing or sitting, let's go ahead and pray. Everywhere, lift up your voices towards heaven. Let's go ahead and pray, somebody. We just want to develop that sensitivity to the Spirit of God. Just develop that sensitivity to the Spirit of God. Just develop that sensitivity to the Spirit of God. Lift up your voices towards heaven, anywhere you are. And let's go ahead and pray. Let's go ahead and pray. Let's go ahead and pray. Into your voices. Mighty God, in the name of Jesus, we come in the mighty name of Jesus. For you are good and a gracious God. You are kind and beautiful. Lord, we thank you because you are faithful. You are a mighty God. We thank you because anywhere two or three are gathered in your name, then you are in our midst. We come up based on the finished work of Calvary. And we're asking that there be a stir in the point of the spirit of prayer. We're asking that sensitivity will arise. That you shall spiritual emotions. That you still have a revival in our midst. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let's go ahead and believe the Lord. Let's believe the Lord that paralysis will be knocked out. Let's believe the Lord that we're taking spiritual dimensions. Come 
Father, the Bible says unto thee that answer prayer shall all flesh come. I'm praying that just in addition to all the things to be heard this month, they'll be stirring to prayer. Oh my God, that broken prayer altars will be restored. That dying prayer lives will be restored. That everyone will be catching prayer fire. Everyone will be catching prayer fire. In our closet, our prayer fire will be on fire for the Lord. We will be burning with passion for Jesus. And Lord, our spiritual senses will come alive. We will not, we will not be making decisions from our head alone. We will be making a decision from our spirit. We give you the praise and the glory. We honor your holy name, mighty Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hold on one while you're standing. I just felt it in my spirit. Will you ask someone close to you, how can I pray for you? Just ask someone close to you, how can I pray for you? And just go ahead and pray for them. Just ask someone close to you. You know, and they can ask you back, how can I pray for you? Okay, let's go ahead and pray. Let's go ahead and pray. Pray, pray. But I want to hear you pray passionately for that person. Pray passionately for that person. bless this evening. Amen. Let's say a big amen. amen. Please you can have your seats. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Can we at this time receive our tithing offering and worship the Lord? Someone says that how do I know what to give? It's simple. If you're giving unto God, just ask